Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. Welcome in, welcome in. Winning Cures Everything. I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. I'm Adam. I guess I get to say that. I get to be a part <laughs> yeah. of the whole thing, man. This is awesome. Absolutely. We're, we're running the whole shebang today. We've got Adam Amin from ESPN in with us today. Uh, we have got a little bit to talk about. We're not going to keep it for too long. He is obviously a busy man. How are you? Everything. Oh, yeah, I mean, every time I get a chance to come back to Memphis, usually I have a good experience. Yeah. Gus's fried chicken last night. That's the. I mean, it's standard. I have a standard. list. That's the first thing that was on. It has to it's be. A, <laughs> so tell me how Gus's was. <laughs> well, I mean, I've been there several times, and uh, last Always night was, was uh, Matt Hasselbeck's birthday, one of our, our esteemed colleagues. So uh, we were going to go down there to shoot anyway right. for our, you know, just for some shots for for the broadcast. And I'm like, well, why don't we just? It's Matt's birthday. I don't think any of these guys have ever had <laughs> Gus's. So, you know, they were so great to us. And, uh, I mean, DeMarco, who was managing last night, and, and Jennifer and everybody down there were, were so wonderful to us. So I certainly appreciate it. But, I, I mean, I've been there. I've been going there for years. I mean, probably since my first trip to Memphis back in, it's, like, 2012. So, it's a good place, man. So, for me, it's a, it's, a, it's a gold standard, a staple. So, I'm glad I got to share that with a lot of folks now, last the night. The restaurant is kind of like a, uh, like a hole in the wall. And, and, and trust me, I think, I think everybody was kind of looking around like, what are we doing yeah, here? Yeah. Like, it, is, like, it holds, <laughs> what, 30 people inside? Yeah, like, it's not nothing much. Major. It's about probably 30 people or so. I think the food is better. I think, places I think like because I, See, I've always appreciated the small... Like, my, my mom and dad, when, uh, when I was younger, when I was probably, like, 13, 14 years old... 15, 16, actually, they had a restaurant, like a little hole in the wall, like fast food joint yeah. in suburban Chicago. So, like, I grew up, like, working in places like that. Yeah. Those are, like, my first jobs, you know. So, for me, it, there's always, like, a little bit hint of nostalgia for places like that. So, I always appreciate it. <laughs> and, obviously, I think you're right. I think the food's just a little bit better. You know, it just feels it's, a little bit more, yeah, more there's real. Yeah, just something about it. There's it, You don't have to worry so much about rules or how yeah, you look exactly. or anything like that. You just go in and eat a good meal, and you're good to go from there. Yeah. Uh, it's a Thursday night football that is that is new. you were on Fridays. You've, yep. you've done you've done everything, and we'll get to everything. <laughs> but Thursday night football, this is a new crew. Yeah, new and it's working really well. You got Hasselbeck, you got Molly McGrath, you got Pat McAfee, who was just in here a little bit ago. Yep. Um, how did this come about? Was this just they threw you all together? Kind or, of. <laughs> okay, it's a, go ahead, expound for me. It kind of it kind of felt like that. Uh, you know, I think uh, we when when we're, when they're trying to put crews together, they're just looking for combinations that work. You know, chemistry right. and things like that. And uh, Matt was looking at, you know, Matt had done a few games for us. He'd done some Fox games on, on the NFL yeah. a, few, a few years back before he got hired at ESPN. And, and I think he wanted to kind of take that step further. Into, I think he really likes doing games. Like, I, 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 just, I just feel like he just pre, like he loves the energy. He and Tim, his brother, worked together on a couple of games the last few years on Thursday nights. And I think it was a good fit for him because he can still do his NFL stuff right. over the weekend. But I think he was looking to do it a little bit more consistently. Man. That's got to be rough, right? Like we, doing doing a Thursday night game, and then you've got like two days to prep for a Sunday. Oh, kind I mean, of thing. I, like we hear, what the great thing about Matt is is just he's so smart, he's so well prepared. I mean, yeah. he's, so, he's so immersed in it too. Like you, he's so easy. Like you listen to him on Countdown, or you watch him at a game. It's just easy. Like he just sounds easy. Yeah, like, he knows it. Like, oh, he's, it's he's all super smart. In him, yeah, and it just comes out that way. So I think for him, Thursday was a great mix or a great fit, and I think they were looking to you know just try to mix it up. I, I think I've gotten to a point where. I mean, I've had a different partner every year. Yeah. Uh, and, and part of that is good. Part of that, I, don't, I hope none of that is bad. I, I think the main reason is, like, I've, I've been lucky enough to move up a little bit. Right. You know, this was, you know, I guess a, it depends on who says it, but I think it, they think it's a promotion, and I yeah. think it, it is to be on Thursdays and be by yourself. Well, people and, watch, like, specifically for you guys. Yeah. And over the past few years, it has turned into, okay, Adam's calling this game. We oh, got to make cool. sure we're watching I'll, that I'll game. T- I'll take that. I'll take that. Any time. So you know, you you tend to get some really fun, exciting yeah, matchups. That that, that is. Uh, I mean, I'm sure it's that maybe an understatement, <laughs> but, but I'll take it. I'll, I'll, like I said, it's, it's some, kind of the Joe Tess effect. I'll right? take the Joe. Like, I'll, I'll take the torch. If, if nobody else wants it, I'll take the torch. I got no problem with that. Joe, Joe's a good, great friend of mine, and and he's done a lot to mentor yeah. and help me out in my career, and and I'll certainly take the mantle. I got no issue with that. Oh, absolutely. Uh, for the Tess effect, I don't know. We don't have a fun name for it or anything like that, but. But not yet. The, the Amin effect, maybe. Man, I maybe feel like not. Tell, it doesn't really have the same ring to this test effect, does. So maybe you, someday we'll come. You up had asked the so, question. So he and I were talking, and I said, "Oh, this is really cool." Growing up watching games, I kind of always was very much a traditional two-man booth, and every yeah, time yeah, they yeah, threw sure. a third guy in, it always drove me crazy. Until ESPN did it with Tony Kornheiser, and that was my favorite year of Monday Night Football. But but it's Mike not. Mike Jaws. That's and right, Joe, yeah. Jaws and Tony. But they threw somebody in that 
I kind of worship that I loved <laughs> growing up. Um, you know, the, the surrogate father figure sure. that I read and, and followed and, and watched. And so I came so much around on it. It drives me crazy in basketball, but in football, I really seem to like it. I think you have to have that chemistry, though. And, and you know, go back to what we were talking about. Like, Matt, Matt is so easy that he can work with anybody. Yeah. I think one of the things I've, I hope I've proven is that I can work with anybody. And I oh, yeah. work with a new person just about every year. And, again, part of that is promotion. Part of that is just trying to find the right mix. Other people move on. Other people move up or down. So I, it's just kind of played out that way that I've had a different partner. But I can work with anybody, I, I believe. Yeah. So when they said, hey, you're going to work with Matt, and it was only Matt for a while. Mm -hmm. It was, it, it was like, yeah, let's do that. That'll be great. That's perfect. Because yeah. I'd, I'd see, I'd <laughs> like, see, I can I'd already see, do that. I was like, oh, yeah, that'll be easy. No problem at all. And then they told me Molly was back with us. And this is my yeah. third year, and the last four work with Molly. And I've done softball and hoops with her and, and football. And, I mean, she's one of my close friends. So right. that, was, that was a no-brainer. And then towards the end of the summer, we, uh, you know, Matt, Matt and I had a conversation on the phone. And he was saying, like, you know, there might be a chance that Pat McAfee might jump on the crew. And I was like... Like, what wait a you, minute. Wait, what? Like, the punter, Pat McAfee. <laughs> so, like, so I had to think about it. And then I remembered he'd done that NFL game yeah. last year. And I was like, man, that was fun. Like, that was cool. Like, it was a oh, yeah. 17 game. Like, he went nuts on the Matt Prater uh, <laughs> touchdown pass. And I was like, shoot, all right, we'll see how that goes. But it, it didn't really seem like anything was, was set in stone. Right. And Matt was just kind of like, yeah, I'm kind of pushing for him. I really think he'd be good at this. And I'm like, yeah, all right. I, that out. makes sense that, that Matt out. would push for it. Yeah. And, and, and Matt and Pat were, were teammates. They were buddies. Like, you know, they, they both speak very highly of each other. So I was like, all right, look, if it happens, we'll, we'll make that happen. So literally the day before we are flying to Charlotte for our uh, seminar, we have a okay. uh, company-wide seminar for college football. Right. There's like executives, a, like a big producers, symposium, everybody's big, big there. Big symposium, all the okay. announcers are there, all the reporters, all the writers are there. And the day before we're scheduled to fly down to Charlotte, our boss – texts all of us, our producer, Molly, and Matt, and myself, and says, hey, uh, jump on a conference call in, in, uh, in, in a few hours. So, like, I kind of had a feeling that this is, this is gonna, about to go down. And they basically told us, hey, Pat's going to join. We're announcing it today, and he'll be at the, at the seminar tomorrow. So Pat's first day at ESPN was the day after he got hired. He gets thrust into this big room with all these executives and announcers. And I mean, these are some of the cream of the crop type of people that, that we've, we've watched for years. Yeah. And they just tell Pat, hey, can you like uh, get everybody into the room and just start, you know, just so first thing he's got to do on the job is like rally the troops to try to get, get into the room. And this is hurting cats. This is hurting like 500 <laughs> yeah. cats or whatever it is. So uh, he just starts yelling and just kind of being, you know, uh, you know, just loud and, and energetic and, and he's and, he's definitely good at that part. And it's yes. and everybody's like, what is what the hell's going on yeah. right now? And, and it's like that's our partner. That's our turns partner. out he's so, good at it. <laughs> so we got to spend about a day and a half together, uh, the four of us and our producer, and just kind of get to know each other a little bit. And then Pat had me and Matt come down to Indianapolis, uh, maybe a week or two, maybe before our first game. Okay. And that was huge because we just got to hang out. We kind of made funny videos and like. Uh, like improv some stuff and Pat put out some videos. Like he's got a whole team. Oh, yeah. His team's yep. awesome and, and they're they're <laughs> so they we, we saw now. the truck outside. Yeah, they, they travel now. <laughs> so every week, like if we're doing a game, like he basically says, Hey, our our show's on for two hours. If you just want to wander in, yeah, feel wander. free. So yeah. we're like, All right, I wandered in last That's, week. Uh, I think we, Molly or Matt kinda of wandered yeah, in. It's all good. So. I'd known that you had done the solid verbal stuff before. Yeah. Yeah. And and when I saw you hopping on with him, I was like, Well, they're gonna be here. Yes. So I'm gonna hit him up and just yeah, see. Absolutely. So and it, it worked out okay. Yeah, that, like you 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 hit me up. It was <laughs> it was kind of last minute, but uh but it worked out all right. So so you started in college radio. Yeah. And you worked you know doing what minor league baseball, and now you do everything. Like <laughs> you are constantly on that channel. How did you build to like what what made you want to do it first? I sure. guess. Uh, we'll start with that one. Yeah. Like, was there an influence maybe that? You know, I, I had messed around with it a little bit in high school, but it wasn't really a thing that I, I thought I was like it was going to be a career. I didn't think it was yeah. a career. I didn't know it was a career. I didn't know this was a job that you could have. And I had a friend of mine who's actually the uh, the play-by-play -play man down in Florida Atlantic now. His name's Ken Lavica. Uh, he's from my hometown, a few years older than me. His mom was my preschool teacher, good buddy yeah. of mine. And he was going to, he was a student at Valparaiso in Indiana. Okay. And about 75 miles east of where I grew up in, in suburban Chicago. He said, I know you've messed around with this. If you want to come and try it, like if you want to pursue it, if this is something you're interested in, come on, come here. Like I'll put you on the air. Like yeah. he was going to be the general manager of the radio station. I was like, all 
all right, I don't really know what I'm doing. <laughs> I was applying to like business programs at Bradley yeah. and like Western Illinois. And I'm like, I had no idea what I wanted to do. I was a, I was a smart guy, like grade wise. I played a lot of sports. I was in theater and I played violin and I sang and I was in all these programs and I, I did a lot of yeah. things. So it's al- almost like a reflection of now. Like I'm not very good at anything, but I'm good at a lot of different things. You know? So <laughs> well, you I I'm think that you are a master at the football <laughs> thing because it, people love. It. I appreciate that, man. I, I I think it was kind of a an, an early reflection of it where I was just like, well, I like all these different things. I don't really know what I'm great at or what I want to pursue or what I really like can lock into. And, and once you realized you could get paid for calling a hot dog eating Yeah, exactly. Ass, then I was like, well, this point. seems like it might be a vibe. <laughs> so, so I go to Valpo, go straight to the radio station, Okay. and then you couldn't get me out of there. You couldn't get me to leave. Like, I, was, I would sleep there. Like, I would, I would work there day and night. And it was just something I'm, I became super passionate about. Uh, and I think at that point, I'm like, you know what? This is, this is probably what I want to do. I think this is a, a good avenue to pursue. So I was good for a college kid. I, you know, I won some awards, like, for college, college radio, right. which is always cool. And then, you know, maybe... That doesn't really do much for you when you're looking for a job. You know, right. you're just like, who's hiring? And this is like 2009, 2010. It's hard. Like, you know, oh, yeah. a decade ago, it was really hard in this, in this industry. Not to say it's any easier now, but there certainly weren't as many opportunities right. at, the, at that point. So I applied to a bunch of jobs, started doing minor league baseball for a couple of years uh, during the summertime, first while I was a student, and then right after I finished uh, college. Like, man, what am I going to do now? You know, baseball season's <laughs> over. I ain't making any money. Like, that was, and that wasn't much. It was a $500 a month job. I was in Gary, working in Gary, Indiana, which was an hour from yeah. Addison, Illinois. So that's an hour drive there, early yeah. in the morning. Yeah. Hour drive nine back. To, uh, nine to five, you're there. <laughs> then you do the game. So nine to five, I'm doing, like, marketing. I'm doing Adobe Photoshop stuff. I'm doing game notes and all that. and doing press releases. And then five o'clock, my day is done officially. Then I'm going to go do the game for free. And that's only three innings a night. And it's just because I wanted to do it. The guy who hired me was at Valpo. He was a, a, he graduated before I I was a student, but he was also an assistant SID there. It's like, I'll bring you on. If you want to do it, I'll bring you on. I can only pay you X amount. But if you want to do the games, I'll I'll give you three innings every night. And if you want to drive to the road games, you're more than welcome to. And there were a couple cities, you know, Joliet, Schaumburg, not too far away, about an hour south. 20 minutes east, you know. It was, like, it was, you're not going to get paid, but, but if, if you, you want, want the experience. You can go, you can come on. I, will, I trust you. I heard you on the air in, in, when you were a student. I'll give you a shot. I okay. Said, All right, that's awesome. So that was my first gig, was doing minor league baseball an hour there, 9 to 5, do the game 7 to 10, do some work afterwards, 11 o'clock drive back, you're back at 12, you know, midnight, back in, in suburban Chicago. Good gracious. Hey, do you think that having, like, a background, a pretty, it seemed to be well-versed background in performance, doing theater, yeah. music, stuff like that, helps you with being comfortable being on the air. 100%. So Gary, Gary has played on stage in front of lots of people, yeah. and, 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 <laughs> and he's, he's comfortable behind a mic. We first started doing this. It took me a while to get comfortable in just, just behind a mic. Sure. And then we started doing YouTube, and it's just like a whole different thing. <laughs> yeah, being and on camera is, it's, is it's weird, slightly man. different. It's it, weird. Yeah. It's, it's a weird like idea. Just you have to be comfortable yeah. in your own skin, but there's just so much more about what am I doing while somebody else is talking? Yeah. Now, what am I doing? Because I'm a big Italian guy and I talk with my <laughs> hands and I, and okay, now we're on camera and I got to kind of, okay, can they even see my hand? All right, so now I can be comfortable. It's up here. Good. And <laughs> well, I, I it's feel like, like it's, it's little stuff like that that people don't think about. You no. know? And sometimes it's a good thing not to think about those things. It's sometimes it's good. You know, I'll, I'll say that for like, you know, a, a lot of people that we work with, they see, they make it so easy. You know, yeah, and it's it's not it's never easy. Like I don't, I'm not making it sound like it's rocket science or anything, but it doesn't. This is a, a it's, weird it's a situation to put a human being into. <laughs> it's a very right. specific uh, skill set. Very right? specific yes. skill set. So yeah. like I understand that, but I, I think that helped. Like I I was doing plays when I was 15. I was playing violin in front of crowds when I was yeah. 11. You know, like that's the, it became kind of second nature. Right. So and and you kind of learn how you know singing and acting. You learn how to project, and it like helps your voice a little oh, bit. Yeah. So like stuff like that helped out. So. I guess it's a as natural of a transition, maybe, to go from that stuff to doing what we're doing, what we're all doing now. Okay. So, exactly. not, so I guess that helped for sure. Um, and, but I didn't have a whole lot of TV experience. My first TV like event came when I was working in Iowa. So after I did a couple seasons of minor league baseball, I was unemployed for a while, freaking out like every other college yeah. student, you know, post post grad does. And they're like, man, I can't. What am I going to do? I got no job. I got. I'm going to end up busting tables. Or I got to do something. You know, I'll work right. wherever I need to work, but. I was getting to that point, and finally I got a call from a small radio station, about 3,000 people in this town, Spare Lake, Iowa, and they called me and said, 
you know, hey, we, we have your resume. Or do you want to come in for an interview? Drove 500 miles, about eight <laughs> hours west to, but it's about 15 minutes south of the Minnesota state line and about 75 miles east of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, a little, <laughs> little okay. pocket in northwest Iowa. And I interviewed for the job, and they said, we, we like it. If you want it, it's yours. And I had no idea that it was it was going to end up being what it was. I mean, it whole, just it, everything started kind of uh, steamrolling after steam, that, right? Steam it, it snowballed. That, and, you know, but it, but like that nine-month period, it's like, this town is, like, awesome in the summertime. Yeah. Like awesome, like great. I like, can imagine like, weather's like nice. Fifty percent, fifty percent of the of the real estate there comes from like lake houses. So it's just like everybody's <laughs> out on the lake. Everybody's got a boat. Bars open up there in the summer. Restaurants, all this stuff. And I was there from October to April when there was nice. just like eighty-five inches of snow combined during one of the worst April, uh, yeah. worst winters in uh, Iowa state history. <laughs> so I, I had good timing clearly on that. Uh, but I, it was a job I cut my teeth. In I did games every day, pretty much basketball, football, wrestling meets. I did everything, doing the sports cast, hosting a jockey shift, hosting uh, the coaches show, getting to know people, and and that was a great experience because it's it's, just it's networking, right? It, like, it, it, well, network not, helps. It wasn't even that. I think it's grinding. I think it was just yeah. it was just trying to grind it out. Like you, people talk about paying their dues, and, and that means different things to different people. Right. Uh, I mean, you guys have done it in a different way, but you guys have paid your dues. Like I think I've done it in a different way, but I feel like I've done that in some capacity. So. Uh, I think it was just reps. Like, there are some yeah. people, and I think you guys would agree, there are some people that are naturally good at things. Like, they're just yeah. like, you, you see him, I like, agree with man, that. he sounds good, she sounds good, they're meant to be on camera, whatever it is. And I'm not one of those people. Like, I needed to do it a lot to learn how yeah. the mechanics worked and what I sounded like. And I'm, a, I'm an over analyzer, I think, probably. That, that probably is part of it, too. I think so. a lot of us are. Yeah, That's, I mean, it. That's I, I, how I am with gambling. Sure. I just overanalyze sure. every sometimes, pick. Sometimes you got to go with your gut, and, and sometimes you just have to you have to just do it to get better at it. And yeah. For me, that was important. So that job was tremendously important in getting better. Uh, I missed baseball. I missed doing games every day and kind of focusing more on the play-by-play side rather than doing the, the jockey the jockey shifts or doing a – Farm, farm, and tractor report. That's probably not. A, yeah. Probably not in my wheelhouse personally. <laughs> I, I could have told you about the John Deere X9 about ten years ago. Not really. Can't, can't really give you much insight on that right now. But none of the updates. None of the, you I don't don't know the all updates the... on it. My software is not really up to date on that. <laughs> but uh, but I, I went back to baseball. I got a job in New Jersey. I did two seasons of minor league baseball out there, and I think it was just being on the air for three hours by yourself every single night. Like those were invaluable. So, Not so going, so by yourself, it, it helped because you've got to be able to fill air, yeah, right? You just have and to you, be able to, and, and, and know when not to say anything and, and be like, hey, the crowd's going nuts. Let's just lay back. Hey, you can hear the, hear the vendors yeah. or whatever, or, man, this is a 10 to 2 game in the sixth inning. I got, and, I got to tell some stories, man. Like, we got to get through this together. We gotta make through it through stuff up. up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, all right, he so. Had 79 home runs in a week? Man, that's incredible. That's crazy. Making that's, stuff yeah, up. That's right. Yeah, you just start coming up with all sorts of stats. So, Legalized sports gambling has has kind of taken over. Sure. You see short, uh, not shorts, uh, uh, TV shows yeah. everywhere, right? Uh, websites, the Action Network, Absolutely. all these different ones. Has it changed the way that you call a game or the way that you prep for a game at all? Uh, prep, not not a ton, because all I really want to know is, hey, what's the line? What's the what's the total? Yes. Yeah. As long as I know the spread and the total, I'm pretty good. Like Makes I don't. Sense. But I'm doing the I did the Jet Patriot game on radio on Sunday. And that's a 23-point spread. You know, that's Patri- that's Patriots, got to be... You know, Patriots came in 23-point favorites. And, yeah. and again, 20 to 23, whatever, depending on where you, where you got it at. But that's all any of us really cared about after the first half. It was 30 to nothing at one point. Yeah, Patriots. that's right. So, so it's like, are they going to cover? So it, eventually, like, especially in the NFL, it's pro sports, so it's a little bit different than doing a college right. football game. We're a little bit more subtle on TV. We're a little bit more subtle during a TV broadcast. We're a little bit more subtle, subtle because it is college football. But with the NFL, I'm doing a radio broadcast, 30 to nothing, man. Like, all anybody really cares about is their fantasy points. So we keep updating Brady, keep updating some of the receivers that you might have, running backs. And what's, hey, Jets get a touchdown and a muff punt. Suddenly it's a 23-point spread. That was an yeah. impactful play. Jared Stidham comes in for Tom Brady, three passes in, throws a pick six. That's a very impactful touchdown all right. of a sudden for a lot of people. So yeah, and, not, so for the outcome of the game, yeah. it doesn't necessarily matter. It mattered but, to someone. But it, it matters changes, to some people. Right. The gambling and the fantasy aspects yes. have changed Absolutely. what the important plays in a game are. 100%. Like, that's, that's insane to me, just how big it is. All right. 
I know you got places to go. We'll you got people back. to see. <laughs> we'll end it up right there. Uh, hopefully, you will be back in town soon enough. Absolutely. Um, and we may just do a phoner at some point, get you back Anytime. in. Uh, we do appreciate you having us. Uh, or <laughs> us having you. Good gracious. <laughs> Thank uh, you for your time. No, so, guys, yeah, it's really pleasure. We yeah, really do yeah. appreciate Happy this. Happy to see you guys doing so well, man. Uh, as always, show brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. they got six incredible sports books. You can find more information on them over at tunicatravel.com. You can find us at winningcureseverything.com. Go find Adam on Twitter. What is it, at Adam Amin? You got it. Simple enough. So go check him out on Twitter. Go, go listen to the uh, uh, broadcast. Watch the broadcast. All the wonderful things. We will see you guys again next week. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.